I guess we, we don't have a dress code, huh? You're looking at my sneakers. Yeah, I was so, looking at your sneakers. La last night, I said to my wife, I'm on Jimmy tomorrow night. What uh -huh. should I wear? She gave me some advice. But then my son, who's here somewhere, 17 years old, said, you got to wear cool sneakers. <laughs> Only cool people wear cool sneakers. That's so, true. So the next thing I know, he's going through my sneaker inventory. I'm actually a sneaker addict. Are you really? A Nike sneaker addict, yeah. How many do you have? How many pairs of sneakers? About 50. 50, huh? Right. Yeah, but I give a lot away. You do? Yeah. You give them, you have it's someone wear who has your size who you give them to? I, I do. What size are you? 11 and a half. Oh, perfect. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I got some in the car. <laughs> Anyway, By the way, I want to say, right, right? when I got your book, I went right to the index to look up my name. <laughs> as I do with all books. You're in the sequel. From anyone I know. <laughs> and I did not find my name, but I did, and I want to tell you, I was touched personally to read the dedication in the book. And uh, if you want to read that along with me there, it says this, of the many decisions I've made as both a businessman and man, I'm most proud to have hired <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> And that includes proposing to my beautiful wife, Willow. Jimmy, you are my pride and my joy. I love you. Well, that, I didn't expect that. And I want to thank you for that. The book is from the heart, starting with that. <laughs> you know, I probably, with the possible exception of Roseanne, caused you more headaches than anyone in the last 15 years. Would you say that's true? Absolutely. And I did not make the book. Here's what I don't understand. Yeah, what? You've been on the air, what, 17 years 17 this January? Years. Yeah. I've never been on the show. You've not? I've not been asked to be on the show. Oh, I, yeah, you've not. So... Yeah. I mean... So you're saying it's, maybe, we're even? Yes. <laughs> we're even. By the way, speaking of 17 years, not that I'm just going to complain the whole time, but I do have you here. This is my Disney ID card uh, for ABC. Yeah. And, um... And you can see there's a letter on the back of the card, a letter N, which means no discount. <laughs> so right. when I go to the, uh, I go to the sto Disney store next door, um, Nothing. if I go to Disneyland, they're like, full price churros for you. <laughs> Thank you for that I also. I think actually we increased the price. <laughs> you started at ABC in 1974. What was your job back 45 then? 45 years ago. 45 years ago. I was called a studio supervisor, which was lower than a production assistant. I was the assistant to the production assistant. It sounds higher than uh, a it wasn't. production assistant. So you worked with, who's like the biggest star you worked with when you were a kid doing that job? Frank Sinatra. That's a pretty big star. Yeah. And did you get to talk to Frank Sinatra? It was actually cool. Mm -hmm. ABC was doing a live Frank Sinatra concert from Madison Square Garden called The Main Event. The one where he was in the boxing ring. Boxing ring, and Howard Cosell, who was then a famous announcer yeah. for ABC Sports, introduced him. And I was asked at some point to get Mr. Sinatra Listerine. Hmm. We're at Madison Square Garden. It's not like there's a Listerine store in Madison Square Garden. So I dutifully ran out, found a drugstore of some sort. This is before CVS. This is 45 years ago. And found Listerine, came running back, went to his dressing room, knocked on the door. I felt like I was about four feet tall. And a security person who was about 10 feet tall mm -hmm. opened the door. Yes, I said, I have Mr. Sinatra's Listerine. Yeah, kid, you know, wait a minute. And the next thing I know, Frank Sinatra appears. He said, what's your name? I told him my name. He said, where are you from? I said, Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn. Right. Two of us are Brooklyn yeah. boys. He said, what do you do? I gave him my title. <laughs> I gave him the Listerine. He handed me a fresh $100 bill. Wow. And interestingly enough, at the end of the concert, everybody that worked on the concert got a gold cigarette lighter that said, thanks, Frank. Oh, wow. So I spent the $100 bill in like 50 Five seconds. Right, yeah. And I kept the cigarette lighter. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, you still have Oh, you have it right here. Wow. May I, may I have a look at it? This is from Frank Sinatra. Never been used. Is this, it never been used? It's probably worth about five bucks. <laughs> no, it's got it. Well, a he sentimental gave, What value. happened was I gave it to my dad. Wow. Uh, who was a big Sinatra fan. Wow. It's my dad Frank died Sinatra. in 2011. Look at that. Look at that. And now you're giving it to me. And, wow. Yeah. <laughs> So nice. This really makes up for the, the discount. <laughs> you said, well, hold this. You, um, hold on, you did a this thing. in my pocket. You did something with, you did an event with Oprah uh, last week, and at that event, Oprah said she wishes you would run for president. 
And um, she said if you did run for president, she would go door to door passing out leaflets. Mm -hmm. Now, wouldn't it be fun to do it just so we could see Oprah <laughs> passing out leaflets? Wouldn't that be a, what, a treat? Would it? And if, I don't know where you're going with this, but <laughs> I will run for president if you also join Oprah. If I join Oprah, oh, I would absolutely pass out leaflets. There's no question about it. I'm, <laughs> I'll mow lawns. If Donald Trump is removed from office, impeached, removed from office, will you remove him from the Hall of Presidents at Disneyland and Disney World? <laughs> will his robot also be impeached? <laughs> I think I'm allowed to plead the fifth. Yeah, I think you are, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you have any second thoughts when you were writing the book about what you should put in there, what you should not put in there? Well, it's glaring that you're not in there. Yeah, so well, I obviously yeah, yeah. made that decision. Yeah, I assume you're saving um, that for the next 15 years, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to write a book that was essentially a collection of leadership lessons, things that I've learned that I can impart to other people. Uh, but I also wanted to be entertaining. So I did a fair amount of editing. I actually made 2,800 edits five really? days before my deadline. Really? Yes. Wow. So I made a lot of decisions about Who what... Who came you... up with the title? Was that your idea, Ride of a Lifetime? Is it a good idea? It's pretty good, but I came up with some <laughs> other ones. <laughs> and I want to maybe use them for the next ones or what? Uh, this, uh, oh, this one is, uh, I bought Fox and I'll buy you too. <laughs> Crouching Iger, Hidden Dragon, I think is a good one. <laughs> this is a, oh, I, this I like a lot. I've seen C-3PO nude. <laughs> now, speaking of C-3PO, you, since you started at this country, company, and I know this is gonna sound like country. ass kissing, He's... at this country that is Disney, that is practically a country now, yes. you, the company's worth like almost five times what it was when you started. So you bought Marvel, you bought uh, Pixar, you bought uh, Lucasfilm, there's some talk you may buy the ocean. Uh, I understand. <laughs> Pacific, Pacific. If that works, we'll move on to the Atlantic, right? But we lost, a few months ago, or several months ago, we lost Spider-Man to Sony somehow. And then you got Spider-Man back. How did you get Spider-Man back? Miraculously. Was Tom Holland really a part of that conversation? He was, he was. At, we had an event called D23, which is a right. big, big Disney, Disney event. fan event. And Tom was there because he's a voice in a new Pixar movie called Onward okay. uh, with Chris Pratt. And he said something on stage, and it was clear that the fans wanted Tom back as Spider-Man. Yes, it was. Made by Marvel and, and our Marvel production team. Right. And after D23, Tom reached out to folks who worked for me, said, could I please have Bob's email address or phone number? Of course, I'm very protected, so they were very careful. And I said, sure, have him, have him contact me. And he did. We spoke. And he basically made a... He cried on the phone. Did <laughs> he really? Was, no, not really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. he was, it was clear that he cared so much. Uh -huh. And actually, we care a lot about him. He's a great Spider-Man, isn't he? He's the best Spider-Man. <laughs> I felt, I actually, I felt for him, and it was clear that the fans wanted all this to happen. So after I got off the phone with him, I made a couple of phone calls to our team at, the, at Disney Studios, and then I decided to call the head of Sony. And I said, we have to get, we gotta figure out a way to get this done, for Tom and for the fans. Like two divorced parents. And we did. Coming yeah. together and figuring it out. And that's how it happened. That's how it happened. Wow, he that's called me. Well, look at that. And I, I called them. I, you know what happens, you know, sometimes, you know, companies when they're negotiating or people when they're negotiating with one another, they kind of forget that there are other folks out there that actually matter. There are the spider case, men yeah. and women out there who you have to think of in these situations. <laughs> exactly. There's a whole Parker family out there. That well, uh, thank you for bringing the Parkers back to Marvel where, the, where, they, where God intended them to be. This is the book, it's called The Ride of a Lifetime. Bob Iger, everybody. We'll be right back with Anderson Pack and Smokey Robinson. I am Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button. So please click now. I'm hungry.